Hello and welcome to my jewelry shop. I'm Jerry Livings and this is not going to be part of the normal videos that I do for instruction that I'm that uh, I'm posting on YouTube and my website. This is a little different. Consider it a, uh, an appendix to uh, the book of all the videos I will be doing. Um, just to show that even professional jewelers can learn new things uh, one of the things I've been trying to teach myself is how to solder jewelry in the way they used to do it way back, you know, in the 1500s or even earlier. Uh, what they would use is not so much these large torches like this. This is a little torch. That's what it's called. It's for jewelry or even something this big. Uh, what they would use is an alcohol lamp. Of some sort such as this and an object called a uh, blowpipe or a mouth pipe basically it's a little thin tube with the end crimped almost shut that you can blow air through the alcohol flame and use this to actually solder your items so uh, thanks to mags uh, thanks mags uh, who wanted to see the setup I thought this might be a good time to do a quick demo and show that even I am working on learning. Um, before we cover anything, I'm going to cover a couple of basic safety items first. Okay, and uh, the first thing to remember is safety third. Okay, uh, look up micro safety third if you're scratching your head and going, huh, what? Okay, and that will explain it all. So micro safety third. Very important. Uh, when you're working with flames of any sort, you want to make sure that you have some water uh, to pour on anything that might catch fire, or that uh, uh, if you burn yourself, that you can pour on your burn, because uh, that will stop the actual process of burning. It will help localize it. Uh, also, you want to make sure that you have a fire extinguisher nearby at all times uh, because you never never know uh, it's the one time you're not prepared is when things can go horribly wrong so uh, I'm gonna uh, show you what I'm gonna do uh, what I have is a bunch of jump rings made out of copper and I'm gonna be soldering those and I'm gonna show the process of soldering a couple three of those and I will talk our way through that also. Welcome to my bench again. Uh, we're getting ready to do some soldering. Uh, one thing I want to cover is the fuels and the tools I'm using. Uh, one thing that will come in handy is a uh, soldering pick. Hopefully not quite as burned as that one. Uh, you can make one out of any piece of coat wire, uh, a coat hanger wire. Uh, I'll be using tweezers quite a bit, and that's another pick. A charcoal block, alcohol lamp, of course my blowpipe, and I'll be using two types of uh, flux. I'll be using borax, it's just mixed with a little alcohol, and I like to grind it in a pestle so it's a really nice uniform size and keeps it well stirred as I'm doing it. Uh, but that goes underneath so anything that drops doesn't fall in there uh, and then uh, I will also be using a modern flux this is something I get from Rio Grande uh, oh boy it's for goldsmiths I have the bottle here somewhere but I cannot remember the brand but it's just a basic flux for jewelers um, okay uh, I have a little tray here with all my stuff in it so and I've already done a couple of these so I have the process down a little bit I think so cover that up a little bit uh, basically that's pretty much it one thing that I'm going to cover is uh, this solder so what we're using for this first set is hard solder uh, when you solder you want to go with uh, solders that have a high flow point down to a lower flow point 
because every time you solder, you don't want the solder joint that you did just before to melt. So uh, we're using hard on these, which is actually kind of tough to melt. So what you do is you take and make little tiny snips, little, little, little tiny snips. Uh, in your solder sheet. Now when I say hard, easy, or medium with solder, what I'm talking about is um, how fast do they flow, what temperature do they flow. The hard is going to be at the top, it's going to melt at the highest temperature, and it's going to flow at the highest temperature. The easy is going to be, of course, at the bottom. Now you can have extra easy, uh, which can be hard to control where it moves uh, with your flames. And you can also have what's called IT solder. Uh, don't ask me what IT means, I don't know. Okay, so now you've got your little snips. You just put your finger there underneath to hold them. And you snip off little tiny, little tiny squares. Like, what? Uh, this, you want them to be anywhere from one to two millimeters square. And yes, that's very small. Okay. So you put your shears down and you put your solder away, right away, back in your container so you don't lose track. Now one thing, if you take and drop some of your, uh, if you drop some of your uh, uh, solder, like a, one of the little chips, do not go hunting for it. Just consider it gone and lost. If you find another one, because you, you don't know when you drop it if you're going to pick up another one and what temperature that is. And that can ruin your whole thing. Okay. And also, when you're lighting alcohol lamps, either use something piezo like this for the torch. So you get the little, little piezoelectric thing going there. It's like a barbecue starter. That's for torches and gases. For alcohol lamps, I would recommend a wood match like this, or you know, a book of matches, or a Zippo lighter with, where you fill it with a fuel. Do not use the butane lighters. Uh, they have gas in them. They can explode. Uh, I keep hearing of accidents where that has happened, but I've never personally experienced that, so better safe than sorry. Let's assume that those stories are all true. So you light your gas alcohol lamp, which should have covered, but I had it uncovered because I was I had it uncovered because I was using it earlier. Okay. Now uh, we have the alcohol flame going. So what we need to do is we're gonna set this here. We use the tweezers. We're gonna grab out one of our uh, little jump rings that we have sitting in the alcohol. And we're going to try and figure out where, let me go grab a roof, because I'm getting old and blind, and I cannot see where my uh, joints are, especially when there's stuff. So you look and go, ah, there's the joint, I almost grabbed it with the tweezers. Put that there. Get a visual clue of where that's going to be. Uh, if you can use your poker, which I can't use my poker to pick up squat right now. We're going to use the tweezers. You pick up one piece of solder. One. And actually, I don't know what I did there, but that's obviously more than one because sometimes they'll fold over on you when they're damp and we'll pick up a couple. So put that one back and we'll pick up another one. So see, that's how big your solder piece should be. Just one little tiny piece lit right on top of there. Give it a look. 
and make sure it's sitting over the top of the joint. And now for the fun part. Uh, I've learned uh, early on, don't put this right in there. You're gonna blow out your flame. Uh, you don't want it too far out because your air makes too bushy of a flame. So about for this one and me, about an inch away to half an inch from the flame, kind of towards the back. So uh, this is about even, so I want it to be back a little bit behind the flame, kind of going, coming down and angle through. And then I'll have my work right here. We'll see this in a second. Don't blow as hard as you can, just really gentle. Here we go. I'm move this torch down here. Place the rest of my arm. This is where I'm going to use the modern flux. And I think I just knocked my uh, solder off. Yep, I did. Well, if I can find my joint. See, this is the fun part when you're trying to sort stuff out. Where's my joint? Right there. So the solder sits right on top of the joint. go. I believe that is soldered. And I'm completely wrong that it's not soldered. See if my solder is even on there. Yep, but uh, it went off to one side. So make sure my joint is closed up. We're just gonna heat this up and see if we can get the solder. To move okay right now what I have is the solder is in a ring and here's the split I had placed the solder on on top here but when I heated the ring this side must have heated so the solder flowed over here like where my thumbnail is so which leaves this open okay so what I'm gonna try and do is heat this up over here more and get this to melt and flow that way and it will flow through the joint okay I've discovered this is a lot tougher doing it by by mouth than it is with an actual torch where you can control the heat very easily. Oops, let's put a little flux on there, just be on the safe side. A couple drops. There, I saw something flash. And what you're looking for is the flash of the solder. Uh, as it moves, it will take and get shiny on you for just a moment. And let's see how well I did this time through. And that, friends, is a soldered joint. Drop that in there. Make sure you don't catch it. Leave on fire. Grab a 
out the next one. Find out where the joint is. Use a solder layer on the joint. Make sure I have that on the joint. Move over just a hair. Now when I'm usually soldering, I'm using a flame a lot smaller than this. So I can have my visors on and I'm right in there. And the flame goes in one direction. It's not going up and then down and up and down. So we're going to put a drop of solder on with the borax. Try to get this one to go quickly. And see if that worked. That's all there is. That's another one. So I am improving the first one I did, which was this large jump ring. Uh, took me about 20 minutes <laughs> to do. So I am improving quite a bit. Let's see where the joint is. Yeah, I've got bifocals, but the vision is getting blurrier and blurrier as blurrier, I guess you would say. More blurry as I get older. So and one one chip of solder, if I can find it, there it is. professional flux and I justify that by saying that if the uh, uh, jewelers in, in Tudor England had access to flux like that they would have definitely been using it so it makes life easier which isn't really a justification but you know so let's get this one Let's see if it went in the right direction, though. Yep, that is very soldered. Let's do another one. One chip of solder. Did I drop that? I dropped it somewhere. It's hard to hold on to those things sometimes. Oops. I'll drop that one too. They kind of come out and they kind of flick away. So 
Okay, so we can get this one. joints okay yep and we just dump that in the pickle now when we're done you want to make sure you always close your source of flame up and uh, make sure your flux is covered make sure anything with alcohol in it uh, has a cover and you wait around to make sure that your block cools off it'll uh, depending on what you're soldering and how much you're soldering uh, cooling your charcoal block off can take upwards of you know 20 minutes so they normally don't keep burning if they keep burning and having low glowing embers then you want to put some moisture on there uh, to uh, settle that down so uh, and there you have it that is soldering several jump rings uh, let's pull them out of the pickle real quick This is a very, I keep my pickle uh, very, very weak. I rely more on the heat than the uh, acidicness of my pickle to remove flux. Make sure I got nothing left in there. Nope. Sorry, Prush. Just scared my cat. Open the paper towels around. And uh, these are some of the ones I did now, and some of the ones I did earlier. But there you go. Jump rings all ready to uh, solder together. So what I will do now is I will take a different size of jump ring between each of these. Something that's a little more oval and join each one into a bracelet thank you very much for watching my little demo here my little appendix and uh, we'll be uh, looking forward i'll be looking forward to uh, having you watch my videos later thank you very much